your home, your car, your bank account? Or is it your intangible possessions, your friends, your family, your spouse? Value is the importance or significance a person places on a thing or a person or even an idea. Economically, value is easy to determine. We know the difference between a hoopty and a ride, a crash pad and a mansion, a wooden boat and a yacht. In our relationships, value becomes more challenging to express. We value family and friends because of the support, comfort, and pleasure they provide. They give us a warm, fuzzy feeling that's hard to put a price on. Value is subjective or personal for each of us. And for this reason, nothing on earth really has any established value. If you need it to survive, it has value to you. But the opposite is also true. If you want it, you, yeah, if you want it rather, it has value to you. If you're willing to buy something, it has value to you. Some people will fork over half of their paycheck for a chance to flaunt some designer's creation. Michael Strahan said he would have paid a million dollars for the flight he took to space. Yeah, a ride that you might not give 10 cents for. If bottled water went up to $200 a bottle, you'd switch back to tap water. But a man stranded in the desert would gladly ante up for a chance to quench his dying thirst. In other words, our preferences and our needs determine value. Now that I've got you thinking just a bit deeper, what? Do you value? As a whole, we collectively value human rights, liberty, democracy, or at least we used to. We value honesty, integrity, justice, and fairness. But individually, I can't tell you what to value. It's your personal choice. What I can do is point you to the most valuable possession you have, and that is your soul. Jesus was, was teaching in Caesarea Philippi when that subject came up. Uh, he had just explained to his disciples that he would suffer many things. Uh, he told them that he would be rejected by the elders, uh, chief priests, uh, and scribes. Uh, he revealed to them that he would be killed, uh, and after three days, uh, he would rise uh, again. It was Peter who took Jesus aside privately and rebuked him. In other words, I imagine Peter said, Jesus, you're talking crazy. You've got a good ministry going on here. Don't 
blow it. That's when Jesus rebuked Peter saying, get thee behind me, Satan, for you don't savor the things of God, but the things of men. You see, Peter had a value problem. He was placing value on the wrong things in life. If he was going to be a follower of Christ, Jesus had to straighten him out quick. He exposed Peter to a new value system, not based on the transient, but on the timeless or the eternal. This new value system was uncomplicated. Uh, Jesus said, Peter, if you value your life, uh, you uh, will lose it. Uh, but if you release yourself uh, from life's uh, value system uh, for my sake uh, and the sake uh, of the gospel, uh, you uh, will save it. Uh, Oh, for what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? Y'all don't know when to say amen. Don't be too hard on Peter. If the truth were told, uh, we're more like Peter than Jesus. Uh, sadly, we carnally cling to our human value system uh, while only occasionally thinking uh, of God's spiritual value structure. Uh, we cling to the short-term stuff uh, and seldom think of life uh, as uh, Eternal. And that's a problem because while physical life is temporal or mortal, the life of our soul is immortal and eternal. So here's the important question Jesus posed to Peter and to us today. What? value do you place on your soul and why should you value it? Well, uh, first, uh, you should value your soul's happiness. Uh, turn around and look at your neighbor and say, value, value. your soul's happiness. Happiness. Uh, come on, let's put our hands together. Let's let those people watching my social media know that we're in here giving praise to God. And, uh, yeah, yeah, value your soul's uh, happiness. Uh, we only get one chance uh, to make our mark uh, in this world. Uh, we should all want to make it count uh, for something. Uh, but true happiness uh, is not found uh, in the secular achievement uh, or the accumulation uh, of things. Uh, fame and fortune uh, provide uh, only temporal joy. Uh, real happiness uh, comes from uh, the soul's connection with uh, its creator. Oh, uh, no one knew this better than the Jews uh, who had been held captive uh, in Babylon. Uh, when the Jews returned from Babylon uh, to their homeland uh, of Jerusalem and Judah, uh, after 70 years uh, of exile, uh, they brought with them uh, all the accumulated wealth uh, from their years uh, in captivity. Uh, they had huge herds of cattle, uh, goats, uh, sheep, uh, horses, uh, and mules. Uh, the chief priests had 20,000 drams uh, of gold, uh, yeah, and 2,200 pounds uh, of silver. Uh, and the common folk uh, added to it uh, another 
20,000 drams of gold and 2,000 pounds of silver. But it was not the accumulation of wealth that brought them joy, nor was their joy founded in coming home to their own land. Their real joy was found in their return to a relationship with the Lord. When Nehemiah gathered them all together for a great celebration, he reminded them that the joy of the Lord is your strength. Oh, and when the people heard the priests read from the books of the law, they wept. They wept for all the wasted years they had allowed themselves to be spiritually separated from the Lord and from their soul's real joy of a close relationship with God. Is your soul starved for a closer walk with God? When we reject Christ and his teachings, we weary our soul. But when we connect with Christ, our soul rejoices in the God of our salvation. The psalmist wrote that we should serve the Lord with gladness and come before him with singing. When was the last time your soul sang with joy to the Lord or shouted with joy? If the worship music seems too long or too loud, maybe your soul is not as happy as you think. It's only through our soul's spiritual connection with Christ that we can truly celebrate being happy in the Lord. I just want to ask you one question. Is your soul starved for joy? You should value your soul's happiness. Oh, I'm on my way somewhere. Secondly, you should value your soul's health. Turn around and look at your neighbor and say, value you? your soul's health. Come on and put your hands together, church. God's health, or rather good health, allows us to work while it is day. In the service of the Lord, a healthy soul is willing to work. Your soul is the motivator of your spiritual performance while you are on this side of heaven. We get it mixed up. But instead of releasing our soul to the Lord's service, we let our mind and our body dictate what we are willing to do for the Lord. Then we wonder why we suffer with ill health. I'm not just talking about physical health, uh, there is also emotional health uh, and mental health. Uh, life uh, is uh, a struggle uh, and the mind uh, and body uh, will never be able to handle life uh, the way your soul uh, can handle it. Uh, but you have to allow your soul uh, to reign uh, over your mind and your body. Deuteronomy 4 and 29 says that the one who seeks the Lord with all his heart and soul 
finds him. The mind cannot find the Lord. He is too marvelous for the human mind to understand. The body cannot find the Lord. No healthy regime or regimen will connect us to his greatness. But the soul, thank you Jesus, but the soul longs to connect to the Lord if the mind and the body get out of the way. The true believer allows his soul to lead because your mind may remember the scriptures, but it's your soul that provides the understanding. Here's the best benefit of all. A healthy soul knows what to do when struggle comes. In the course of your lifetime, your mind may often open the door to doubt and fear, but your soul can slam it shut by pointing you to the one who is able to carry you through all of your trials. No man should desire to fight the battles of spiritual warfare with his mind and body. He needs to allow the soul to lead the way. Without the soul's guidance, there can be no victory because it's the soul that connects us to Christ. The soul connects us to Christ's promises and perfection. His majesty and his mercy. His bounty and his beauty. His boldness and his blessedness. His truth and his trust, his value and virtue, his holiness and hope, his justice and joy, his forgiveness and freedom, his salvation and sacrifice. Your soul is relying on you to release yourself uh, to the care of Christ. Uh, the kingdom of God uh, is counting on you. Uh, do you value uh, the work uh, of uh, your soul? Uh, well, uh, I got to let you go now. Uh, you got things to do today. Uh, but finally, uh, I just want to tell you uh, that you should value uh, your soul's uh, home. Uh, turn around and shake your neighbor by the hand. Look him in the eye if you're not too mean. Say, value you. your soul's home. Uh, come on and put your hands together, church. Uh, we're going home uh, when I tell you uh, that eternity uh, is home uh, to your soul. Uh, or at least that's what God uh, desires. Uh, your soul uh, is uh, marking uh, time, uh, waiting to be united eternally uh, with uh, its creator. Uh, until then, uh, you are your soul's uh, landlord. Uh, how you house your soul uh, is your choice. Uh, you can provide your soul uh, with a righteous uh, temporary shelter uh, until Christ uh, comes back uh, to claim all the souls uh, that belong to him. Uh, or you can be a spiritual slum lord. Uh, destroy your soul uh, and expose it uh, to eternal separation uh, from the Lord. Uh, think 
of it this way. Uh, salvation uh, is your insurance policy uh, on uh, your dwelling. Uh, it ensures uh, that no matter what calamities uh, befall you uh, in this life, uh, your soul uh, can never be separated uh, from Christ. Uh, salvation uh, is the insurance uh, that prepares us uh, for Christ's uh, coming. Uh, to deny your soul uh, its eternal home uh, in glory uh, is the most egregious sin uh, of all. Uh, Peter had it all wrong. Uh, he thought of life uh, in terms of fame and fortune. Uh, he thought Christ came uh, to famously deliver the Jews uh, from Roman uh, oppression. Uh, but according to Jesus, uh, those uh, are the things uh, of this uh, world. Uh, our soul uh, desires a home uh, in the next world. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, praise uh, the Lord. Uh, make no mistake about it. Uh, Christ uh, is coming uh, in glory. Uh, and no one alive uh, will miss it. Uh, unspeakable splendor shall uh, accompany him. Uh, every dignity uh, shall uh, signal him. Uh, every bit uh, of might uh, and magnificence uh, shall mark uh, his coming. Uh, Christ uh, shall come uh, with great power and glory. Uh, with the angelic host uh, accompanying him. Uh, the dead uh, in Christ uh, shall rise first uh, and join his uh, assembly. Uh, the believers uh, who are still alive uh, in that day uh, will be caught up uh, to meet him uh, in uh, the air. Uh, there never has been, uh, nor will there ever be uh, anything grander than his coming uh, to claim the souls uh, that belong uh, to him. Uh, there will never uh, be anything uh, more solemn. Uh, there will never be anything uh, more important. Uh, there will never be anything uh, more awe-inspiring. Uh, there will never be anything uh, more joyous uh, to the believer. Uh, and there will never be anything uh, more alarming uh, to the wicked uh, and uh, the ungodly. Uh, the ungodly uh, will be like the chaff uh, which the wind uh, driveth uh, away. Uh, the psalmist says uh, that the ungodly uh, won't stand uh, on the judgment day. Uh, they won't be included uh, among uh, the righteous, uh, the ungodly. Uh, the psalmist says uh, will perish. Uh, well, uh, I uh, value uh, my soul. I value uh, my soul, uh, and I don't want my soul uh, to perish. Uh, I've taken out uh, an insurance policy uh, to protect my soul uh, from eternal destruction. Uh, it's uh, called uh, Jesus. He is uh, my soul's uh, salvation. Uh, he may already be yours too, uh, but if not, uh, it's not too late. Uh, you can permit your mind uh, and your body uh, to yield uh, to your soul. Uh, give your soul first. Uh, first place uh, in life. Uh, release your soul uh, into the care uh, of Christ. Uh, when the last uh, trumpet sounds, uh, it will be joy uh, for the saints uh, and sorrow for the sinner, immortality for the souls of the saints, and death for the souls of the sinners, deliverance for the saints, 
churchontherockbaptist.com Again, give us a telephone call at 408-532-ROCK If no one is there to answer the phone leave your number We'll call you back, we'll pray together and we'll help you find a Bible-believing church where you can grow, glow, and go for Jesus 
Well, it's offering time here at Church on the Rock, and we've made it so easy for you to be able to give through your various financial apps. Zelle Pay is our preferred financial app, or you may use PayPal or Cash App. All you have to do is enter our telephone number when they ask you for the information. 408-532-7625. 408-532-7625. We're also on the Givelify app. You can search for Church on the Rock Baptist. You'll see a picture of the sanctuary. Follow the instructions there. You may also visit our website, churchontherockbaptist.com. Follow the instructions for giving there. Or you may mail your gift to Church on the Rock, Post Office Box 730-341, San Jose, California, 95173. Whatever you decide to do for God's church, know that we believe that he will never let you outgive him. So expect God's blessing on your life. Well, until next time, same time, same place, join us again for a breakthrough with Church on the Rock. Until then, pray for us and know that we are praying for you. And if you are in the San Jose, Silicon Valley area, we're right off of Highway 101 and Yerba Buena Road. Come and worship with us. We'd love to have you in our midst. Stay on the battlefield, soldier. He's coming real soon. I am on the battlefield for my Lord.